Welcome back to the show. We got a good one for you today. Bitcoin hits a new all-time high, breaking $51,000 per Bitcoin. Wow. It doesn't stop there. St. Louis Fed speaks on Bitcoin. I think you'll be surprised about the comments from the St. Louis Fed on Bitcoin. And we're also going to look at a Swiss bank and SBI make a deeper investment with one another over $30 million. Let's get into that. Facebook Libra DM coin gets closer to launch. And while all of that is happening, we're at 53 cents for XRP, and they say the charts are mirroring 2017, and we just may see a $2 XRP by the end of this month. Huh. Let's roll that beautiful intro and get into this. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's go ahead and get into it. Bitcoin has done it again is right, and it has hit another new all-time high at $51,000. Wow. Congratulations to Bitcoin. Man, let's just take a look at the space. We are well over $1.5 trillion at the top here for the market cap of cryptocurrency collectively. Bitcoin, $51,244.23 right now. It's up 4.8% on 24-hour and 10.32 on a seven-day. Ethereum, $1,800, $1,824.82. And looking down here very quickly at XRP 0 0.5399, we are off by over 2.5% for the 24-hour and up 3.2 on a 7-day. At the first look at this, you say to yourself, we've lost all our gains, right? Hang in there. The conversation continues. We will get to it. All right, right now, let's pick it up right here. Michael Val Five Links, a small scale study of financial executives, has found that 5% of the companies intend to invest in Bitcoin as a corporate asset this year, with a further 11% stating they could do uh, so by 2024. Well, the, the rate the prices are moving, I don't know if I'd want to be a part of that 11% that may be waiting till 2024. I could tell you that. Uh, all right, so let's look at this because I found this to be very interesting. The St. Louis Federal Reserve president says Bitcoin's rise won't affect the U.S. dollar's dominance. Bullard said the influx of private currencies is a natural part of currency competition, but that the U.S. dollar will win and Bitcoin is more comparable to gold. Wow. Okay. So now let's let's take it one step forward and, and let's hear from the market regulators and let's get a unified framework that solidifies everyone's place in this space. So this way we can really get a classification that allows Bitcoin to be that digital gold definitively not understood you know through the space in the retail investment space definitively let's get that done for bitcoin and all cryptocurrencies and i think i'll feel a much better about <laughs> what's happening with crypto all around all right so let's keep this going because we're not done here ripple former head of regulatory affairs is now uh at grayscale and is the new chief compliance officer shout out to ben melnick I think that is right. And if not, I apologize, my friend, but congratulations to you and your new chapter at Grayscale. What a small world this digital asset space is. A new report from the Blockchain Research Institute urges the White House to rethink their technology strategy and policy toward blockchain and crypto. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just have to chuckle because these these things when I see these uh, kind of articles, uh, you know, that just suggest that, you know, nothing's been done. I mean, we've been watching the crypto asset space be developed since, what, 2009 when Bitcoin was introduced to the world. 
uh, you know, there is a lot happening. We've seen issuances from the OCC. We've seen this, that, and the other. Some of this article feels a bit like political posturing to me because there has been an enormous amount of effort and things done in the previous administration, but I get how politics works. It's all about posturing for power and taking credit and all of these things, and I really don't care. Just get it done, right? Just get it done. That's really where we're at here today. So, and I think they're going to. I mean, if you understand, uh, political winds are really in the sales of the digital asset space as a as a uh, as a whole. Looking here as a reminder, Federal Reserve Payments Pilot incorporates Ripple partner Valente Technologies. I do want to remind you that the Fed now is a domestic settlement usd you know liquidity to liquidity uh dollar to dollar settlement so it's not likely that we would see like xrp uh, potentially used in the early onset of this app but it is exciting to know that a ripple partner like valente technologies is working with the pilot program we will keep an eye on that here's something interesting because more and more companies and corporations are really, really seriously considering what MicroStrategy and Tesla and these other investment funds, Guggenheim and Bill Miller and all these other uh, investment funds and corporations are really looking at taking a position as uh, Bitcoin in their portfolio. Microsoft president doesn't rule out considering Bitcoin in the future. He says there's no plans currently to put cash into Bitcoin for now. We will keep an eye on that because that sounds just like PayPal. And, you know, the PayPal had such a success launching cryptocurrencies to their customers. And I think they're going to see, you know, a rollback on this topic where they come back in two or three months and go, you know what? We're buying some. So we'll see how that plays out. This is an interesting (coughs) connection here. I see this article and I think to myself, somebody's really gearing up the market infrastructure and the plumbing, if you will, to this new digital asset space. (coughs) Excuse me. (coughs) Almost knocked over my water. Signum, which holds a Swiss banking license, excuse me, said to Tuesday it had secured an eight-figure U.S. dollar investment from SBI's subsidiary, SBI Digital Asset Holdings. Now, this is exciting to me, a $30 million investment, and they were already working together <clears throat> before this. So it will lead another round and raise $30 million. And just to get into this for a second here, I think I have it highlighted. With strong start to 2021, we look forward to working with our stakeholders to continue innovation, new solutions, innovating new solutions, excuse me, launching new products and ultimately providing our clients the ability to participate in the fast growing digital assets opportunity in a safe, convenient and fully regulated manner. That's what we want to hear from the CEO of Signum Singapore, no doubt about it. And it says here also, um, coming as the company prepares for public uh, possible public offering, the capital raise will also go towards increasing Signum's range of custody offerings, commercializing its tokenization platform and secondary market trading facility, as well as expanding its open banking API infrastructure. If that's not connecting the plumbing to the new market infrastructure and payment rails and the ability to get connected to this exchange and this bank and these digital banks. All of this is being put together right before our eyes. Don't believe that. It's still true. All right. Now let's look at XRP price here because We've had some uh, news come out and the charts apparently from the technical analysis uh, people that are out here. And I appreciate each and every one of them. I know there's uh, Crypto Bull, there's Blockchain Backer, there's so many others out here. You need to check them out. But right now we're sitting here ranging between 55 and 48 cents. And the talk of the town is this right here. XRP price is expected to retrace to the support line around 50 cents, which we saw it go down to 48, 49 and back up slightly where we are now before hitting the previous levels above 70 cents. Now we know that 62 to 70 cent range is really a spot where we can start to push for a dollar or more, right? Well, let's get into this because 
here is an article right here, and I believe they are looking at uh, the information that was provided by Crypto Bull himself. XRP price to keep swelling despite the SEC standoff, which is exciting. The XRP price is talk of the town since the uh, asset rallied like a monster entering the top three cryptocurrencies. Let's go here. Um, it tried to pump, yet victory remained short-lived. XRP failed $1. There was a spot here I wanted to get to here. Oh, I have it highlighted. Here we go. The XRP price rally is expected to be unaffected by the annoying Ripple SEC standoff. According to a new update, both the parties do not indicate any chances of settlement. Hence, due to a strong XRP community, the XRP price is expected to hit $2 by the end of this month, as predicted by a popular analyst, Crypto Bull 2020. 20. And again, looking at the analysis here, it's saying uh, previous trading day began with shedding the profits price dip from 58 to 53. We noted it actually touched 48. Right. And if we get back over into that, um, uh, was it 62 to 70 cent range? And we push back into that range. We can seriously be challenging a dollar or two dollars by the end of the end of this month. And that would be phenomenal. And here is an actual chart here that's put up for us. But I think that ultimately what we need to pay attention to is if we get back up into that 62 to 70 cent range, if we see ourselves move back into that range, I think we have a good chance for us to push further up. We are going to keep an eye on that. Shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf because the XRP chart mirroring a similar 2017 pattern and expected to hit two dollars by the end of this month who's unhappy about that not this guy i could tell you that even if i am here for four or five digit xrp i love seeing it move the right way i mean let's, let's call it what it is all right look here this is getting interesting too by the way diem gets closer to launch as fireblocks and first introduce new payment infrastructure let's get down into this diem is the facebook libra coin that was renamed because of its horrible uh reception when it was announced to the world and world leaders everywhere stood up and said oh no you don't so they've had to restructure everything that they're doing behind it and it has given them the right approach i think because here it says let me just take this whole thing because you want this whole thing. The DM Association is progressing toward launch with a new technical upgrade that reportedly allows more financial institutions to connect with the payment network. Now, think about the systemic effects of Facebook launching a stablecoin for the two and a half billion users on that platform. This is really going to be something when it when it does take off. Crypto security specialist Fireblocks and First Digital Asset Group, a DM payment provider, announced Tuesday that they have developed a secure wallet and infrastructure that allows financial institutions to facilitate transactions on the DM network. Founded in 2017, the First Digital Asset Group enables merchants and other institutions to accept and process both DM and stablecoin payments. The DM network appears ready to begin onboarding new clients, provided they qualify as a virtual asset service provider known as a VASP. The Financial Action Task Force, which is an international level uh, regulatory agency connected to the G20, um, defines a VASP as any business that involves exchange and transfer or safekeeping of virtual assets. The partnership between Fire, uh, Fireblocks and First is intended to accelerate the adoption of DM payments and to ensure that any capable financial institution can connect to the network. That is the key takeaway right there. DM Association went uh, underwent a total rebranding December 2020, changing its name from Libra Association. The project was perceived to be closely associated with Facebook, although Facebook did introduce Libra in 2019 and remains a key backer of DM today. The association is overseen by 27 member companies. We will keep an eye on where this goes, right? Uh, it needs approval from the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Organization, and we will keep an eye on that for when it happens. I have to say, you know, looking at all of this information that we're, we are looking at today and where XRP is, I am absolutely fascinated. I have asked this question a lot on this channel. You know, uh, where is the price action coming from? If there's one thing I could say, I absolutely do not believe 
that the price action is coming from retail investors. I absolutely do not believe that because when there was no restrictions on retail investors, we were not able to move the price past 25, 28, or 30 cents, give or take. Now there's restrictions on U.S. retail, which is a highly liquid bunch, by the way. And we're severely handicapped that we can get it through uphold, but with daily, weekly restrictions on how much you can get. Bit true, you could still get it there and trade into it, but now you're paying double fees, right? Still grateful that they are able to, we're able to get it through those places, but nevertheless, we in the U.S., retail investors have been highly restricted and handicapped here. And you expect me to believe that we're at 54 cents because of all of us? Oh, I don't think so. Well, there's something else going on here. Yeah. <laughs> and I happen to think that it's actually maybe what we're actually seeing is market makers and participants that are some of that 95% of that customer base that Ripple has, which is not retail investors or noise in the market. I think those market makers just may be starting to buy up some of the liquid available XRP off of those exchanges. And maybe just maybe we don't realize it because it's under the cover of darkness of what most people believe is retail volume. I don't have the answer, but I tell you, that seems to make sense to me. One thing I did want to show you before I get out of here is there is Uphold back on Link 2, by the way. Kraken is back on Link 2, and Ripple just ran out, so keep an eye out. I think that's going to get re-upped in Marquetta as well. Make sure you go check it out. It's all on Link 2. Make sure you download the app and join us on the Lunch and Learn today. That's going to be a really great one, and I will catch all of you on the next one. Make sure you check out the links in the description and the comment section. There are products and services in there that you may want or need, and they are trusted, vetted links. I'll catch all of you on the next one.